What's happening, Shredder Nation? Happy Tuesday. Welcome to episode number 77 of Shred Your Body. I'm your host, Jesse James Jemnick. I'm one of two ER Shred ambassadors. Uh, and every Tuesday night, we come back on to share with you another uh, really just epic journey, epic story of health transformation. Um, you know, the ER Shred has cracked over 25,000 tribe members now. We call it a tribe, a community. Um, it's something like you've never honestly experienced ever. I've grown up playing sports. I've been around in Facebook groups for many, many years. Uh, and this is just a very, very special place. So I encourage you to join us there. Um, you don't have to do anything. Just check it out. Um, I believe from my soul, from the deepest of my heart, that our health is our greatest wealth. And with the literally thousands of testimonials that we've had now since launching the ER Shred, and the continued success, I'm talking the longevity of the transformations is really what gets me the most excited. Um, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten plus months, even some people over a year of consistently living this lifestyle. And all we've seen is just better and better and better and better. Um, and tonight, my guest, uh, I'm really excited about this. Her story is just amazing. She's been through uh, so much and she's lived through so much and she's really come to this this realization at the end. And I hope that we can share that and paint that picture with you. Um, and I can't wait to, uh, you know, for you guys to kind of hear this story. So without further ado, welcome to Shred Your Body, Sarah. Hey, Jesse. What's Good happening? Yeah, I'm, I'm so ready to share. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So first off, thank you. Um, I know you were just on our last Wednesday call with Sean, um, which for nobody that, you know, for people that don't know, we do a Tuesday night call where we do a little deeper dive. And then Wednesday is our shred your testimonial call um, where we have anywhere from like, what, four to five to six sometimes um, people that are coming on. We're doing updates. We're doing brand new ones. And I know you've joined us quite a bit. Like those calls are pretty epic. So thank you for uh, helping with that call and sharing your story and and thank you for being willing to show up today and and really kind of dive deeper uh in the hopes that we can help someone right even if it's just one person um you know that's that's the thing so i really really appreciate you i'm excited to be here definitely Awesome. So for anybody that maybe didn't see you uh, Wednesday, they don't know who you are. Um, just real quick, tell us about, you know, who you are. Uh, give us a little bit of a background. What's kind of your passion around life now these days? And, and we'll start there if that's okay with you. You got it. Um, All right. Sarah, I'm from Omaha, currently in Omaha, Nebraska, originally from Miami, Florida. Uh, passion in life is music. Um, singing, uh, played in a rock band, um, taught voice very well. Um, and then also going to concerts of the band Heart, who have signed my Ovation guitar. Um, my other passion has been uh, race walking. Uh, okay. I got, I'm on a recovery journey on probably about a year sober. My sponsor said, you have to start walking. I said, that's not in the big book. And that led to me going to a race, then getting trained by the Miami Runners Club in race walking. And within six months, I won my first state championship. I basically won every distance in Florida. They invited me to do pen relays. And then I ended up two summers in a row for the national race walking camps uh, in Orono, Maine and the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, training inside all sorts of Olympians. And in 1996, I was asked to be the national coach for the junior women's race walking team. And we took them to compete against Canada, Canada and Ottawa. So getting back there, wow. back to that has been a passion. And I used to teach walking classes in West Palm Beach as well. Wow. Now, race walking, I, I'll be honest with you, Sarah. I mean, that's that's epic. So first off, congratulations. Um I don't know if I've ever heard of race walking. It's been a sport. I mean, since the 18, 1900s, definitely had Olympians in it. Yeah. I think uh, Dave Waddle was one that was really epic. Besides the name, most of us think is the funny duck walking. Okay. Um, but def it as far as a sport, 
when I trained for my first marathon, I did, I finished the first Disney and was the first female walker to finish the first Disney. Uh, did that in 440. So I was doing about a 10 minute mile pace. Uh, we used the Galloway method and they sort of joked, I trained with runners in a 10 minute mile group. Yes. So when they would do, when they would walk, I would just walk slower. Yes. And, um, yeah, I, I could do races with holding an eight minute mile back then on a 5k. Um, now the Galloway method, I've heard of this. This is where you go on hard, come back, go on, come back. So yeah. the goal is, is that, uh, the theory is that when your heart rate gets too high, the energy excerpt that you're putting out is wasteful and you're almost better off pulling back to regain to, to go. Is that, is that, yeah. I that right? And I, I did the whole marathon that way too. Um, back then before fitness trackers, I trained with a polar heart rate monitor. Okay. Uh, use that for training. Usually my highs got in the one nineties on, you know, a 5k race. Um, I physically could push myself. Well, one of our coaches said it's not a real race unless you puke at the end, but I never would get to that high point. But usually about a 193, 194 is where my heart rate would end at the end of a 5K easily. Um, now, when I come back and I've done track training, I yeah. can easily hold it in the 170s, even at this age. Wow. Uh-huh. And, I, and okay. I have a polar. Oh, too. I hold on. I have to, I have to, hold on a second. I'm sorry. I have to unwrap this. Like, you know, like, you know, a little bit about me, like yes. I'm a fitness fanatic. Uh, I'm a, I'm a competitive ultra marathon runner. Like I, I, you know, running mountains and putting myself through suffering pain. Like you you just said to me now, explain to me the rules of race walking. Like what, what constitute the fact of like when you're no longer walking to when you would be jogging? Cause a I would imagine that's a rule, right? Mo of movement where one foot after the other never leaves the ground uh, when you're, and your knees do not bend is the best okay. way to put it. So there's, it's a judge yes. sport in that they will knock you for leaving the ground, which they consider running. Okay. And they will also knock you for, bent knee. Now power walkers can bend their knees. That's become a thing in about the past five years, but official race walking, you do have to. So it's, it's more of a roll of the foot, I guess, you know, you're hitting yeah. heel, toe, heel, toe. We use lighter racing flats um, and you're also pumping your arms. So one of the things as I've come back was to start doing indoor marching, pumping my arms, mimicking like what I would do for indoor drills when I train teams. I can only hold about three minutes at a time back in February. Uh, now I'm on day 75 of at least a mile a day and I'm up to, I can do about a mile and a half. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, that's, you know, that's there to now and we got a lot to fill in in between. Yep. Then. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I'm still blown away to be honest with you. Like I'm like, I'm a trail runner. You know what I mean? Like I'll go, you know, granted they're longer distances. So my goal is not to, to go out of the gun, like a, like a marathon or it's, it's a whole different animal, right? Like you have to conserve the energy and stuff. But I mean, if we're hitting like eight minute miles on the trails, you know, seven and a half minute miles, like you're, you're moving pretty damn good on the trail. Mm -hmm. I'm like thinking in my brain, I'm like eight minute miles for those of you that are runners, uh, whether you're a runner, you know, I think every, anybody who gets up and does any style of running or, or power walk, like you're a runner, by the way, um, there's no like set speed or set whatever, but I just want to put this in perspective. Like that's freaking epic that I'm, you're holding an eight minute mile walking. <laughs> I'm going to blow your mind a little more. So okay, good. Do it. in high school, I could not do the 600 dash. I could not run. I played yeah. sports. This girl, no runner. So when I got started in this walking, I'm like, okay, I can do this walking thing. I'm not a runner. Yeah. Um, because I was in Miami runners club about two years into it or so friend said, Oh, we're having a cookout and we do a fun cross country run. I'm like, she goes, well, you could probably try to walk it, but the terrain is a little rough. And I'm like, oh, let me see what I can do. Yeah. I ended up running the whole two and a half miles. Now, mind you, I had not tried to run since high school. Right. 
Right. Um, I did a few 5Ks and I, I actually did the corporate run because it is a run, a four miler. Yeah. And right. I held a seven and a half pace on running, no training on the running. And after right. Hurricane Andrew, I had to sort of run because there was so much debris for two right. years out there. So, yeah. it, you know, what's yeah, crazy I though? Was the fitness just came naturally because of the race walking. So it's that yeah. aerobic in a sport that all of a sudden I could run, even though yeah. I was not a runner. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole, yeah. but I, I think, um, I think you were training to run because you're, 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 you're understanding how to move your body forward. You're understanding how to take your glutes and your butt with you. Um, you're engaging your core. These are all fundamentals like running, walking. It's all engagement, engagement from the core first, right? That's how we do it. Um, but I just want to do something real quick so people don't lose this. Not only do I think that's epic, um, walking, can you just touch on how beneficial to health walking is because I think walking is one of the most underrated, um, most best exercises that you could possibly do um, for the entire body. Do you know much about that? Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's, I'm just asking this random it question. Just but. from a standpoint of circulation, blood circulation. So any level of walking, like especially with seniors, yep. um, getting all the limbs. And if you're doing the thing about race walking, that's different from street walking. If you do what I would say to do, I'm involving my whole body right. in it. Running, right. not so much. Running, you're not getting the upper body workout that I'm getting. Yep. Uh, because you don't, you can't really pump the same right. way unless you're a sprinter. Right. Um, but yeah, as far as that total health benefit, it's the circulation, it gets out there, it's the lung capacity, you're building, rebuilding lung capacity. And you're also building muscle tone, muscle, you of course know, but burns more than fat, all of that other stuff. So, yeah. but yeah, as far as the science, you know, I'm not, finance is my background, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, science, yeah, yeah. not yeah. the science geek, yeah. uh, don't ask me. <laughs> That's funny. So, <laughs> but I would like to share, because I know people here, oh, you did all that, what happened? Um, yeah, that's what we're that's what we're gonna get into, Sarah. Is where I okay. want to get into that. I just wanted people to not underestimate walking. Um, yeah. you know, we'll we'll post an article. Maybe we can do a, a Susan with a holistic corner or something and find all the massive benefits. But I just wanted to make the point that don't underestimate walking and your main form of exercise right now through your journey has been getting back to walking. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay, it, so it, it's, it's just obviously water aerobics. Amazing water aerobics and some strength training before I could walk. And we'll go over that because there was a point yeah. I could not walk. Yeah. And I just, I just want people to, to get that point because the goal is, you know, not to, you know, if you've got a big lofty goal, right. And you got this big audacious, I got to lose 70, 80, 90 pounds. Like I wouldn't recommend you try to go to the gym. You know what I mean? Like it's like statistically, it's just, you know, the strength training benefit. Yes. 100%. Like you need strength training in your life for sure. The science backs that up. However, you know, getting your body moving, getting the ligaments, the arteries, the blood flow, like where blood flows, life flows, health flows, like it's just so beneficial. So we'll leave it at that. But I just wanted to touch on that. Let's get into thank you for sharing all of that, by the way. Um, so, yes, you asked my next question. So you did all of this. You had all this stuff going on what happened? Like, where did you get to like, you know, I see this happen with some athletes too, like athletes who are athletes, you know, in, in their, in their time. And then, you know, something happens in life and we get down this roller coaster, like kind of take us to the journey of like, what led you up, I guess, to even finding the ER shred. And then we can kind of get into that. It's, it's a good story. And, and to, to be honest, and I always explain this first, I struggled with weight my whole life. Okay. Um, they start me, they started me on diets. I was originally started out in ballet and in order to stay on point, they wanted me under a hundred pounds. And at the yep. time, I think I was five, five as like mm -hmm. a 10 year old, 11 year old. Mm -hmm. So I, at 11 years old, I began the Atkins quick teenage diet and trying to get to 95 pounds. 
that started a vicious circle. So the only, only yeah. time I could end up losing weight was if I cut calories below a minimum to live. Mm. So knowing that and what precip precipitated me getting into the walking was I had been bigger. I had my first child in my early 20s, mid 20s. And I also had a bad alcohol and substance addiction. So mm -hmm. I had come in recovery. And the only reason I had lost weight was because I couldn't eat food the last year before I got sober. Gotcha. Um, but I've since, just to say, I've since, I had a relapse in 20, 2008, but I will have 12 years again for a second time this October. Alcohol is not a part of my life. But what happened with the thing now? No, we knew as one of the things I pointed to Jesse, even at the Olympic Training Center, no knowledge of nutrition. So nutrition mm. did not come into play for me as an athlete, other than gotcha. carb loading, but don't even go there. But I had, they found three tumors on my neck, um, thought they were cancer. I was supposed to go to the Olympic trials, had plane tickets. Yeah. And I, instead I was in surgery. Mm. and took them a few months it came back that i had now here's here's the funny rub i was actually training for the alaska marathon and raising money for like leukemia lymphoma at the time yeah but i turned out non-cancerous lymphoma but i ended up with vertigo okay could not walk i was dizzy yeah i could not look at a computer i, I was having trouble on my job because everything yeah. was spinning yeah so I stopped walking. I focused on my son and the weight piled on. By the time I hit 2005, I was 310 pounds. Wow. Um, I then said, okay, I'm going to go on a calorie cutting diet. I did. I was eating below a thousand calories a day. I got back to race walking because of that. Mm. And I ended up in 2007, one Calle Ocho 5K. Uh, back race walking was eh, probably not, I was down to about a 10 minute mile again. Okay. Um, and then when I lost my parents, I fell apart again. The drinking came back, the weight came back. So by the time 2019 rolled around and I had in, in the intermediate, which you, I know you're going to touch a ton, a flesh eating bacteria that almost killed me. And because I moved so many times, I ended up with a severe disc problem that ended up mm. with long permanent nerve damage in my right leg. So by 2019, when I got introduced to the shakes, I was hobbling with a cane in total pain on four morphine pills a day and a hot mess and weighed 200, almost 265 pounds. Wow. And that's when I started isogenics. Wow. And then you you did the old way for a while and you you I had success. You had, a, you had success. Okay. I, I got and and but I did one thing different. One thing I always pointed out to people. I did the research and I knew pain was such an issue for me. Yeah. I did the 30 day, but I cut out all gluten. Okay. And Within a month, all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, whoa, I'm not having pain. What yeah. is this thing? Yeah. And that was the first thought. And I had a friend who was in this just a mile a day group and he's in a wheelchair. And he said, you can do this. I'm like, yeah. Ben, I can't walk. I can't do anything. He goes, do you think you could pedal a recumbent cycle? And I'm like, maybe. And I tried that at a gym and then I heard they have water aerobics and I heard uh -huh. that. So they actually had a cane bucket. I would put my cane in the bucket. And when I was in the water, I felt undisabled. Wow. So I started that. And then with my knowledge from training, I said, you know, if I strengthen that area above my knee, above the nerve damage, maybe I could walk again. So yeah. I started doing leg presses. And by about six, seven months in, I had lost maybe 40 pounds. Mm. And at that point, I started trying just a lap at a time on their indoor track. 
And by, I think it was November, I was able to do my first mile and get out on the trail. And then by the time and com I completed that March, I ended up hitting 100 pound club. And then wow. by the fall, I was easily, I was back training thinking I'm going to race. I was yeah. doing track workouts, you name it. It had come yeah. along. But I still, in order, <clears throat> after I lost the 100 pounds and even to get there, I had to cut down the calories. I was down to back under 1,000 a day. That's the problem. Mm. You know, wow, that's a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me make sure, let me make sure I got all this. Your your journey literally started at 11 years old mm -hmm. when you were doing ballet. And for whatever reason, they thought it was wise to put a 10-year-old or 11-year-old on a Atkins diet versus teaching how food can be fuel for an athlete. So yep. for me, I'm like, okay, that's the trigger. I always dig for the trigger and you kind of made it really easy because you've done this work, obviously, to try to figure this out for yourself. I can tell because um, usually people don't pinpoint that. So bravo for that. So that started your journey. Then life escalated. Obviously, you shared the story, but it seems like that, that coaching, that learning carried through through every situation even into your adulthood it was like okay what do i do well i gotta cut everything back i gotta deprive myself i have to so you got that in ballet my you body got that was as, insulin you know, resistant jesse and, and i'm just so confused at how you bingo, even bingo. did all that like how did you do all that activity living on a thousand calories like that feeds my like right leg i don't i don't understand how you even function to be honest with you I would, I would out carb load the night before a race, but I literally would have to, if I wanted, I could eat a little more, but I had okay. to increase to two a day workouts in order to do it. I wasn't burning the fuel. And I mean, I tracked my weight. Talk about, I'm, I'm pretty free of it now, but I lived yeah. and died my journals with food, weight, what's the trigger because my times were related if I mm. didn't stay at a certain weight range, I could mm. see it in my, my, and I, I'd first pick it up in my, my splits for my 400s, you know, my workouts. And I could see, okay, I'm slow. I'm dead on the feet. I'd get that dead feeling. And, you know, Bob would say, how's your weight? What's happening? You mm -hmm. know, well, do this, do that. But no, none of it, you should have this ratio of carbs. That was not in the mix what are you eating right. more right. just maybe you need to cut your calories again um and then just load up before a race i mean right. i would do things like during the marathon i did goo um yeah. but i even had to watch what i could eat before a race or what i could do before a workout i had to usually put something in me but it was not necessarily nutritious i remember usually okay a toast with honey and butter was about what i would do before a race and that's yeah. crazy stuff. That is, I agree. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, we're talking about your athleticism and what the journey was. And I, I like, this is, this is huge to me because you were training at a level, right. Of your sport at an Olympic level. Mm -hmm. And yet there was necessarily no guidance on nutrition, no understanding how, you know, the proper fuel, can, can heal your body, can produce certain things. Like, I mean, like it was, thinking, and I'm it's like, just not my sport either because you would go into, so we were training, we had luge and bobsled team would be on the track yeah. with us, almost like foot, former football and the aerial skiers. Yeah. And you go into the food hall. We all lived in a dorm there. You go into the food hall and, Oh, it was like, you had to really be selective to even eat anything that looked nutritious because this mm. was all junk food, carbs. Here's the ice cream parlor. Here, put candy and sprinkles on this. And I'd look at this and say, we do not look like athletes here. What? Yeah. But nobody was guiding it. There was no, we'd have meetings with trainers at the center, but yeah. there was no nutrition class. I wonder, you know, I'd be curious to know if that's changed over the years. I'm um, hoping it has, but I mean, this I, is in the mid nineties. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, it's crazy because I don't know if it has Sarah, because I mean, you know, I study, 
I learned from medical, you know, scientists and, 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 you know, functional medicine doctors. And, and I mean, the consensus is like, we have so much evidence, right. Of like, for instance, how damaging sugar and flour is. Right. I mean, it's crystal clear. There's, there's no arguing the inevitable outcome. Right. And it's, it's right there in black and white. I mean, it's, it's human done, it's double Y placebo. And yet it will take an average of 17 years for that research to actually come into standard medical practice. And I'm just like, what? Like, you know, it's just nuts. So I don't know if it has or not, but I, I, you know, we're talking about athleticism. How many people, let's talk about the mindset. Like you've shared with me multiple stories and every time that mindset came back to deprive myself, starve myself basically, oh, I can't eat food because I have to do this. Um, you know, I know you help coach people. I, I've been fortunate to be a part of, of many people's lives. And, and I hear this all the time. People get trapped in these stories and these, it's like these vicious circles, you know, it's kind of like you're on a hamster wheel and, and you're running and running and running, but you're not freaking getting anywhere. Like, what did that do to your mindset? Let's, can we dive into that? Do you mind a little bit? Like, how yeah. did you feel about yourself? What was it like, like, like being that picky? with food because I, I feel like there's people that are there right well, and then and so let's hit why, that so i'm gonna i'm gonna go into a hot topic in the group. okay you've got people smashing your scales yes my first action when i couldn't so with the COVID, my taste buds went arch mm -hmm. steaks tasted like cardboard to me what i craved the most and the only thing i could taste was sweets okay so oh my god the sweets i had and then I crave very spicy. I've never been able to do sriracha. And here I yeah. am doing ramen noodles with sriracha on them, literally. Okay. I just, so my sp taste buds are off. Everything's yeah. off. But the first thing I did when I stopped shakes and I, that, I stopped weighing myself. Because mm. in my mindset, if I don't see it on the scale, it's not happening. Right. I wear loose clothes. I was in denial about how and the only thing in, in April 2021 for 100 pound club. And I had to get on that scale and I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And. Yeah. So I. Tried so are you are you suggesting for people that might be stuck like. You know, so for you, you identified that the scale was a trigger. So if you use the scale, it would almost like, even though you knew you shouldn't, even though you knew you didn't want to go there anymore, are you saying that when you use the scale, it would trigger back the old memories and kind it of put you into me, like that old no, way? It, it keeps me in check. Oh, it, it keeps, keeps you. Oh, your scale keeps you in check. Reality. And oh, oh, okay. Okay. So for some people, you know, that there are people out there who don't know how much they weigh and then I'll see what they're eating. And if they're not weighing themselves, it's not happening. If you're not going to your doctor every year and weighing in or getting your blood checked, it's not happening in their lives. So for me, I need that check. Although for now, gotcha. I don't really, it's not a constant. Okay. It, it's, it's in other words, okay. I weighed at the end of the shred yesterday yeah. I got my measures, happy, happy. Yeah. And I probably won't hit it again until we start the May shred. Um, gotcha. Well, actually, I'll hit it again because I do have to end my ISA body before that. Yeah. But that's okay. the only reason I'll weigh again is because I have to end my ISA body. But it's gotcha. not as much of a measure. But for me, avoiding scale avoidance. So, it's for all for a lot of people who are on the shred and doing well yes mm -hmm. god destroy your scale but for other people out there it may not be good because it's it's a very good way to be in denial because mm. you really aren't in tune with what is happening to my body and scales gotcha. are can be a good measure of that you know i use inches for my success what blew yep. me away this ice body was the inches and then i have to say one of the things once we get to it is the way and where I'm losing it now are totally different than when I lost it the first time. 
So I actually pointed it out to Jessica Tuskier. She's also 100 pound, has been the same dual journeys, you know, second yeah. time around. Yeah. yeah. And I, I asked her, is that different for you? Because where I'm losing it are the places I finally want to lose it. I've yeah. got less loose skin, less all that, because when I lost it, I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to have to have some sort of surgery. Yeah, yeah. And I'm watching yeah. it this time. And I'm like, this is looking pretty good. Interesting. You know, I'm happy. And I mean, this shred, my waist just alone went down two and a half inches just on this past shred. Wow. Yeah. And and wow. not the weight. So you're 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 explaining true body shifting and composition. Exactly. Which you know, there's benefit in going fast, which I think is a great thing for a, a jump start. And then there's also benefit in what you're explaining as well, too. So, and I love, you know, listen, I think some people can absolutely benefit from the scale. I think other people, it's their worst enemy. Um, you know, for me, you know, for you, I'm glad it works. But for other people, you know, I just think people need to use it as a tool. Um, you know, I, I went on a hike I shared with you with my daughter this morning. We climbed a mountain. We were up at 4802 this morning um, by like 830 in the morning. Right. And it's funny because I had my watch on. I had my phone with the all trails app and then she has her watch and every single device got a different result. You know, one oh, yeah. was more miles. One was more elevation. And why do I share that? Because the, the scale can be used used as a tool if you have control over under understanding of it, right? Like the scale doesn't take into account so many factors. It's just weight and gravity, right? It doesn't take into account metabolic health. It doesn't take into account, um, you know, inches lost. It doesn't take into account how you're sleeping or whatever. So I think that's the bigger message is that if you can use it as a tool for your success, great right? If you think it's going to hinder you, smash it because it, it it's whatever works for you could be something different for somebody else too. And I think mm -hmm. that's the whole con, you know, that's the beautiful thing with the ER shred too, is that we have all these different things. Um, but I like the way that you, that you looked at it too. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me that way. Yeah. And the other thing you talked about mindset, one of the things, even, even when I would get a little frustrated, the first part of my journey, Yep. Um, and I've always been a perfectionist that came from my father, so whatever area is life, you know, I, yep. I was on a roll, you know, I was all of that stuff, but I learned to give myself grace, especially, you know, as I was going in a journey, even when I was plateauing, although I was cutting calories cause I really did want to see what I could do with it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the end all be all. And this time with the shred, it is less so, um, you know, because I knew I, I could even feel it this week. Honestly, the final week of my shred, there was no difference except the inches. And, yeah. I, and I know that's a grace thing. My point is I was feeling good. I wasn't hungry. I had plenty of energy, you know, and, and I've had to do what's right for me, which I know we'll mm. touch base on a little here in a few minutes. Yep. Yep. Um, but I guess that's my learning point. Now, mindset, as far as sticking with something and staying with it, that is probably the hardest thing. Like when I'm sharing with a person, mm -hmm. I can't give you that. Right. Um, but I do. I am a big believer in goal setting mm -hmm. and establishing your why. And my mm -hmm. whys have always been strong. And, okay. you know, even every way of life, I've been through hard times, yeah. but I wouldn't change a thing. There was a point in my life where I was on food stamps in 2013. You mm -hmm. know, I have been through the ringer, literally mm -hmm. relocated myself. That's why I'm in Omaha, mm -hmm. but also come out of it and always been determined that my attitude is life is a blessing. I am mm. grateful for what I had. I had a roof over my head. I had a bed to sleep in tonight. That's what carries me through. Mm. And that's what carries me through on the shred. And I mm. didn't even think I was going to be able to be on isogenics. I literally started out with one canister and then had to mm. save up for my path where I was at. Mm. But I was told how it would work. And, and I just had faith. <clears throat> okay, yeah. this is going to be. And 
the best thing I've ever done for myself. If I had to make mm -hmm. all the, the things I've done. But yeah, mindset, I can't give you, but I can teach you how to develop your own mindset yeah. so that you have goals. What is your passion? What is your burn? What is it important to you that you want to do? For me also, in 2019, one of my short-term goals was I knew I was seeing Heart in Concert that summer. I wanted to be able to, even despite my cane, I wanted to be able to stand and rock out for the whole show. Yeah. And I did that. And I was in like the second row Unbelievable. and did that. And I mean, I said that was huge. I wasn't even yeah. at goal, but those little bit of what I had been doing was enough. And that was such a victory for me. That's awesome. Cool. Well, congratulations yeah. on that. Um, I, I love what you're sharing. I mean, you you just painted a beautiful picture, um, you know, in, in my world of health coaching, I don't have the answers for everybody's life. Um, I, I believe you have your own answers and my own job is just to do what you said. Like I, my goal is to, is to highlight your amazing qualities and to get you to realize them and to get you to start believing in them. And I think you just defined um, one of the biggest determiner, determining factors, I believe is my belief is having wise and goals that are intrinsically centered versus extrinsically centered. And, you know, when you were trying to lose weight before you were doing it for a sport, you were doing it for, yes, it was, it brought you joy or whatever, but you know, for now, like, it sounds like you found those, those intrinsic meetings and it's really shifted your whole perspective of even when, you know, thing, you still have hard days, right, Sarah? You, you still have hard days? I, I still have challenges. I still of course. Um, I haven't figured out how to totally undo stress being a culprit for me. So we ah. had a stressful week at work. And literally within 15 minutes of getting a meeting notice when I was told what it was about. And one of those, not my fault, but here's what we're going to do to you sort of situations. I, I had to run to the bathroom. Yeah. And I can't control those things yet. I'm working yeah, on yeah. it. Um, yeah. I have, so with my energy, and I've told a few people, when I'm tired, it's not that the shred is not working for me. It's yeah. that I probably, my body at that point is telling me I need more rest. And I am a horrible disciplinarian at getting to mm. bed on time because you will see me online late at night and I mm. should be in bed earlier I'm not that great at that. I was really okay. bad at it when I was a race walker too. And yeah. I had to get up at 5 a.m. for training and I really hated it. And yeah. I would sometimes live on four to five hours. I know my body, like today I'm great because I can sleep in on Saturdays. I got yeah. over eight hours sleep. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not so good at those things. But, you know, I know where to work. I know where yeah. the culprits are. I know it's not that's sometimes my habits that do things to me. And I think that's also a part of it. How honest am I going to yeah. be about what good things? And one of the things as your body does heal in this process, as I'm going through this and especially coming off the illness I had the past year and a half, my body sometimes is saying, Hey, Sarah, I need to rest and regenerate. You need to yeah. give me this. And I sometimes don't listen. Yeah. Interesting. So that's where part of like giving yourself grace can come in. Right. Mm -hmm. So I love this because if people, you know, this is for, this is really beautiful, Sarah, like, thank you so much for, for really digging in and really sharing so much of your journey and just being so real and raw. Um, it, it, it really takes courage to do that, especially with a lot of people. And I just want to thank you before we keep going, because I hope people can pull out that, really what you're defining is what we keep trying to say. Like there is no end goal. It, mm -hmm. it, it's really a journey. Um, it, there, there's no, there's no failure. It's, it's all learning lessons. Like, you know, it's like you're learning to listen to your body where you didn't do that before. And, and Hey, I'm not perfect, but you know, these things I got under control and Hey, I I've identified these things and I can set some things around that. And I can probably use the same skills that got me to get walking again 
to get me to bed earlier or to whatever, whatever your goal may be. I'm just giving an example. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, and hopefully people really picked up on that point because that's beautiful. So before we get into this next section, let's, let's do this. How long have you been shredding now? I started my first shred on January 31st and I January 31st. Yeah. And I did, there was, <coughs> there was one month where I did like a double shred. Okay. But I so you're pretty much consistently every month. So you've done six now then so far. Yes. Okay. So six shreds and to complete a shred, if anybody doesn't know, uh, the ER shred is an 11 day um, protocol, which is an elimination reset. Well, actually shred five protocol. shreds. We'll five shreds. Them. Okay. Five shreds. So, it, yes. so five shreds. So 55 total days on and then in between, um, you know, we can talk about how you, I want to share about how you live life there because I think a lot of people get that very confused. Um, rightfully so it's, it's a confusing world. So the more that we can share these stories of you guys and how you're doing it, um, the, the more people we can help. And that's really, uh, from the board perspective, like that's our main mission. We just want everybody to feel awesome. I, I think everybody that deserves that, you know what I mean? Um, so overall, what are your results so far after five shreds? Okay. 39.8 pounds, 10 and a half inches off my waist alone. Um, that's huge. Overall, yeah. I, I, Overall, on my ISA journey, I'm almost to back to the 55 pound loss. So, there, so I basically gained. Well, I really gained a little more than that. But once I hit that realization I talked about, I was trying to at yeah. least do the low car, the meat part of the shred, even yeah. though I couldn't do the shakes. Yeah. So I did lose about another eight pounds. But Overall, I came into the shred with only about 15 pounds of the over 100 I lost off of me still. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, that was a, you talk about guilt. So you'll know, and this has been growth. I will say you haven't seen me share a before picture from when I came in in January. Mm -hmm. it, it was really rough. It hit me a, a, an honesty point when one of my friends shared in real people, real results, mm -hmm. my success picture. Cause I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm not there. I'm not there now. Mm -hmm. I, I had to come clean yeah. about that. It's been a lot for you me. You know, you know, I've seen your picture now that we're taught, like I've seen that picture. I know, I know what you're, it's my profile okay. pic, right? Still. Okay. Yeah. But, and I got lower than that. I mean, I did get lower than that too. I went down about another 10 pounds below that. Okay. But being honest, coming back, doing a few lives, that has been hard for me. Showing you mm -hmm. who I am now, coming on this today, showing you this is who I am now. Mm -hmm. I am not under 100 pounds right now. I'm still over 200, but I'm working on it. And I'm doing mm -hmm. all this at this weight, which I couldn't have done the first time around at this weight. So that's saying a lot for where I'm at. Like, in other words, where I was at this weight, I know from my journals exactly what I could do at this point. Yeah. What I can do now is so much more. Even though. Yeah. I'm so can we, can weight. we unpack that a little, can we unpack that a little bit? Cause that's pretty powerful. Like, so mm -hmm. you were doing a healthy lifestyle previously, um, you were doing what you, you know, what most people would consider a healthy lifestyle, right? Like you're watching what you were eating. You were trying to do the right thing. You had removed gluten from your life. Um, and you couldn't do the physical activity then well, at the same way that you can do now. Is that what you're saying? I couldn't do it at all. I mean, once I got down, then I'd already lost the weight. So I came into being an athlete when I was at the weight. What I'm okay. saying is when I started isogenics, Yep. Because one of the great things about Isobody is I have a record of exactly where I was yep. every point. Yep. So I looked back and I could look there and then I could look to my walking and my exercise journals and say, okay. well, wait, I couldn't even do that then. I mm. couldn't even, I was out of breath at this point and here I am doing this more now. And what's even funnier is, my measurements right now at this weight are way smaller than they were the same point in my journey in 2019. 
at the whoa. same weight. So, which is whoa. telling me I've got more muscle tone. Whoa. That is okay. That's big. Mm -hmm. That's big. That's big. So you were, you're literally the same weight from yes. then to now, but the difference is you My had weight more is inches. about three inches smaller than it was so at the same weight. Just your waist alone. Mm -hmm. That's visceral body fat. Yes. The dangerous fat, the organ fat, the, the fat that causes chronic disease. Yeah. Gone. That's why I told Same Sean weight. on Wednesday, I That's ordered epic. a large shirt thinking I'll, I'll fit into this in a few weeks. I went to put it on and it fit. Larges didn't fit for me until I'd lost about 70 pounds. And I'm like, what wow. the heck? Wow. Wow. I mean, that, that okay. We could end right now because literally that's that's like that right there sums it all up, right? So mm -hmm. what do you think? Let me ask you. You've kept such rigorous journals and you've done a lot of work. So this, you're a great person to kind of dig into this. I'm a data geek. <laughs> what, what do you feel is the major differences between the healthy lifestyle versus the concepts and the lifestyle that we try to share with people uh, through the ER shred in our community and such? There, it's sort of twofold for me. One, okay. the fact we incubate our shakes mm -hmm. and versus me getting 20% protein utilization before getting 90%. Mm -hmm. And there was no way, even as an athlete before, I could have done anything that could have given me a 90% protein utilization because the product mm -hmm. did not exist then. Right. And then the bigger yet is on the 30 day program, which is what I was on. And yep. for a lot of people, I'm not, if it works for you, great. Yep. But I didn't know what to eat for my third meal or my snacks other than I was the one thing I did do that was different. As I told Jesse, I went gluten free because I yep. did research. I had such pain. I was on four morphine pills a day for pain. I do have permanent nerve damage in my right leg. Mm -hmm. um, I was hobbling with a cane at the time when I started Isogenics. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see, I had heard gluten, you know, cutting it out could cut my pain levels. And yep. as a recovery person in recovery, I didn't like being on pain pills. I mm. took them just for my doctor, but mm. I needed them to function and work. I mean, after my back surgery, it took me a year to be able to sit in a chair. I worked yeah. day after back surgery. I was working bed squad, bedside for geek squad on in my side in bed, taking calls, doing tech support for gaming. Interesting. Yeah. I, I did gaming tech. And, um, but so anyhow, that was that was the only thing I did. And cleanse days. So I have diabetes history in my family, okay. yet I am a big to the point of being hypoglycemic if okay. my stomach gets empty and I would get dizzy. So when I would do my cleanse days, I was like, I would get so nauseous the first cleanse day I was throwing up mm. that night. Mm. And I was trying there like, oh, well, maybe you should do more whey thins or you need to do the chocolates, order the chocolates. And nothing was really working. So I okay. guess one of the things, so I didn't know what to eat. I'm just counting calories other than gluten. I'm trying to combine veggies and stuff. Yep. I'm having some problems. I know already because of my system makeup. So I'll just say it so everybody else knows. I have a double length twisted colon. So raw veggies yes. are a no-no for me, but I could do some cooked veggies. Mm -hmm. So when I came on the shred, the first thing I dreaded was day three. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to be nauseous. And this is what they're giving me to eat. I'm going to be the one that passes out. Yeah. And I got to the evening that night and I'm feeling good. And I did, I rotated my, I had a, I make a big jug, usually two a day, this size. So this is my hydrate right now. Yep. I make the same. I do two bottles of this 23, 24 ounces with yep. cleanse. And I alternated that with the bone broth and had a hydrate going. And I felt great at the end of yeah. day one. I was like, well, this yeah. means I'm going to be sick day two. 
And I get on day two and I'm feeling even better. And I'm like, what the what? It was the first thing I probably posted in there. I just got through two cleanse days and I felt great. What is That's this? Awesome. I've been yeah. cleansing for two years and couldn't do yeah. this. So that yeah. was the first. The second was, okay, I've always loved meat, butter. I'm a steak girl. I, I cook a mean steak. Uh, yeah, my my ex fiance would probably tell you that's what he what attracted him to me. <laughs> and um, me cooking just a steak, and I'm I, I'm single. I live here. Um, yeah, it was so simple, and it satiated me. And mm. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna trust the process. I'm not counting any calories here. Yeah. This ten ounce steak satiates me. I'm going yeah. for it. I yeah. got used to the butter coffee and I'm like, okay, I'm loving this too. Yeah. And I, I, it really blew my mind. What just yeah. happened? I don't know. Your video went out for a sec, but I can still hear your audio. So if I know that back, it says don't, don't my browser it. has lost the connection to the camera. Make sure I have the right camera selected. Okay. Let me start camera again. Hang on. There we go. Oh, sorry. Good thing you're a tech person. Yeah. I just had to read directions. <laughs> That's good. But yeah, I guess so that the big difference for me is this plan provides a blueprint for mm. what to eat besides the shakes. And it makes cleanse days manageable and something everybody can do. Even me who have mm. low blood sugar and better yet, when I get out and about and I forget to bring food or something, I used to get yeah. dizzy and nauseous. Yeah. You don't get that anymore because Wow. My fat, my body is taking in the fat. There's no more dizziness. That's that fat ad adaptation you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Your body, your body is becoming a lot more efficient mm -hmm. at flipping itself from when glucose is present. You can utilize that, but it doesn't sound like you're putting much in that in there anymore. Um, but your body is now literally converting the fat to obviously the byproduct of ketones, those ketones turn to energy. And that's literally what you're explaining. And then, you know, it's just, it's amazing because you weren't able to, you know, protein utilization, obviously protein is not just for muscle. Obviously it's a big part of it. Um, protein is good. Protein is the building blocks of the body. It's, it's amino acids and that's your entire body, right? So you're able to maximize that. You're fully satiating your body. I heard simple. I think every interview I do, I hear that this is the simplest thing done from people that have done like in the past. They're like, I have never done anything that's easier than this. And I've never felt so satisfied in my entire life. I'm satiated. I can go out and not be starving. I'm not a slave to food. I mean, whoa, right? And then on top of that, we have our amazing community where if you do have an off day, can you briefly speak on that, on, on the ER Shred community? And if did that has that benefited you? Has that helped you along the way? I, I actually, the one shred, I the shred I did when I wasn't part of the group, I didn't do as well. I don't know okay. why. I think I was doing the right. I think I was just more enthused when I'm with the yeah. group. I like the group yeah. shreds. I, yeah. you know, I won't discourage somebody from starting outside the group, but at least stay within a day or two of the group if possible. Um, but I also was learning a lot about myself in between yep. too. But there's been some down dates where I don't feel like putting as much umph into my nightly workout yeah. Yeah. um yeah but i i guess i also you know have tools i've mentioned it in the group just a mile a day so every yeah. day and just a mile a day i post here's my yeah. proof of my mile yeah. that keeps me from saying i'm gonna slack off totally today absolutely so having accountability has helped having the group most of all for me i'm a helper helping mm -hmm. others and sharing experience and then get excited. Like I, I have my friend Isabel right now. I don't, yeah. I just met her through, I, she's not somebody I yeah. started on products, yeah. she was on them. but just seeing her excited excites yeah. me. Oh, that's so awesome. um, and she's had, she just finished, she had success. So that so awesome. uh, when I see others, it gets me excited. I don't, I yeah. really haven't had bad days because of the group. Yeah. You're asking yeah. me about bad days, and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, haven't had those. Yeah. Um, I but I, I do want to touch base. So maintenance has sort of an enigma to everybody. 
Yes. Um, I wanted to add what resonated with me. The first yeah, thing do. I added was pepper. I okay. added form a spice girl. I added garlic. I wanted mm -hmm. to do shrimp scampi, so I added lemon. Okay. Um, these things one at a time and they work. Um, I wanted, I saw the pickles things. I said, oh, that looks good. I found a great mm -hmm. brand of pickles. It's only mm -hmm. like vinegar, salt, dill, and yep. garlic. And oh my God, I can do a ball raw, I can do the dill pickles and I get yeah. raw burgers, love them. Yeah. And then I, uh, about three, right between the last shred and this shred, I added mushrooms. And okay. Oh, Steak no good. And mushrooms and Bob. Bob had posted a picture. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, it. I'm learning. I love. I have so many foods that I'm adding that I love. I know for me personally, I can't add gluten's. I already mm -hmm. know. Don't even go there. But I also want to say something. Sometimes, like my first shred, I found two of the foods we can eat that are triggers mm -hmm. for me. So mm. I can't do grass-fed ground beef. Mm -hmm. Tried it twice, ended up throwing out a whole pound of it. Does not. Yep. My stomach was upset. And I was also getting a lot of gas. And I looked at, I had been snacking on hard-boiled eggs. Mm. I can't do hard-boiled eggs. I can do scrambled. I can do fried. Cannot do hard-boiled. Yeah. You know, I think, I think this is the, okay. So let's, let's, let's unpack this a little bit. This is a great point. So, you know, what we try to preach this in the group all the time and we still see it all the time. And I just want to keep talking about it and talking about it until it's like blue in the face and people just like see me in their brain. Um, because it's so important to realize that my food could be your poison. And, and literally I just posted a picture of a dinner that I ate the other night. And for me, it was like epic fuel because I've done 20 years of research and I've gone through the ringer myself and I've done the work to know what food serves my body for my specific goals, my metabolism and what I'm looking to do. That dinner that fueled me would have ripped you apart with some oh. raw vegetables, right? And it I looked think good. No, it did look good, Jesse, but I knew- I listened. Come on, tell me that I didn't nail that steak that was sitting on top of that thing. That was a yeah. beautiful, perfect, oh, yeah. pink, done looking steak, right? So the foundation, I needed people to understand that the foundation of what we're doing, right? Fueling your body with the most bioavailable, dense nutrition on the face of the planet, good quality, grass-fed animal uh, and animal fats and, you know, high quality seafood that's natural and, and we're paying attention and you brought up some things like herbs and spices. I mean, gosh, like ginger, garlic, thyme, oregano, these are powerful, powerful compounds, but they might tear somebody up. And that's the beautiful thing, right, Sarah, is that you're going on your own exploration and we're just kind of like hiking the same trail, but I might have a different experience than you. And well, that's and okay. you might also, what I like may not be the what you like. So one of the things I love being a Florida girl is seafood and things like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, I get that Grubhub credit every month. Yeah. I got my lobster tail and my bacon wrap scallops last night. Yeah. I also ordered, I, I ordered some extra stuff. So tonight I've got garlic skewered shrimp. There you go. I mean, there you I, go. and I'm a happy camper. Now somebody yeah. else that might not be good for, but for yeah. me, I like to switch it up. Um, yeah. I also, one of the things with the garlic, I, I have Cuban roots. I like to do, uh, pork chops and moho and okay. I like garlic and stuff. And I am looking for grass fed liver because I love liver and onions and our, yep. our favorite friend in Kauai. I saw that and I'm like, Oh, I got to do what Kathy's done. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Not everybody. Do you go, do you go chicken? Do you go chicken liver or beef liver? I normally, when I do liver, when I did liver before and I haven't done it being the grass fed, I would go with calves liver if I can find okay. it. So I'm okay. going to try to hit a green market, see if I can. Yeah. But my dad raised me on fried chicken livers. 
we fought okay. over those. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I yeah. have tried chicken thighs. And I'll tell okay. you something, the farm, the raised ones, and you want to get the things that are not injected with extra water. So I got mm -hmm. ones that have never been injected. They were so nice and meaty plump. It yeah. tasted like the chicken I had when I was a little kid. A literally awesome. such a difference in the meat. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Blew me away on that. Cooked it in a little garlic and lemon, a little pepper. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I love that we're talking about this. You know, I just had this big chat with Sean the other day and, you know, for people, we, I don't know if we want, you know, we're kind of hitting the hour mark and I, I want to respect everyone's time and your time. And, you know, for people that don't know, I just want to share with them because you've shared with me and we didn't get into this, but um, a little over a year ago, was it a little over a year ago uh, with your leg that, right? Yeah. Um, so when a, 2009, just real fast, 2009, I had got flesh eating bacteria from swimming in a saltwater pool. Yep. Um, totally ended up in the ICU, almost died. It, the leg required two surgeries. Mm -hmm. One of the complications of having long haul COVID and gaining all the weight, that leg wound popped open last year. Gotcha. Yep. Um, so I'm, it's now been under the shreds. It's been miraculously healing. Um, yeah. I also do the collagen on the maintenance. So I started okay. the collagen again last night. Yeah. It hel It's definitely a help. But sure. that healing that body and getting that nutrition is what I'm finding. Because I realized also with the long haul COVID, once that popped in, I knew all that infection had come back at me. It had been yeah. laying dormant all that time. Yeah. 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 And you shared with me too, during that struggle, you know, you were on some serious rounds of antibiotics. Yes. Um, you went through the ringer. Well, I um, take and both probiotics we have. I take the isobiome. I take yep. the triotic is new to me. I yep. find it helps me because of my extended colon and the fact it gets backed up. My, I've never not done isoflush. I have to, wouldn't recommend mm -hmm. it to all of it, but if it is something you need, and then last but not least was I was still feeling, I was feeling alive, but I knew there was a little bit more. Yep. So I ordered last few weeks back, I ordered the complete essentials with isogenesis. Mm -hmm. My leg had been buck buckling when I walked, my nerve damaged mm -hmm. leg. And right away, I could feel the energy difference. And for me yeah. also, the isogenesis has a way of helping you. If you do have areas in your body, it helps them yeah. regenerate and heal. So yeah. for me, I need those. And yeah. I know we had somebody asking on the shred the other night about she has absorption issues. She has issues. I said, look, I've been doing, I had a great shred and I did the vitamins the whole time. So mm -hmm. it's not like it's going to prevent you, but do you need it? Maybe not. It's not always mm. good just because something's there, unless it's something you absolutely yes. need. It doesn't mean you have to have it, but yes. it's nice that we have such quality resources at our fingertips. And yeah. once again, and my doctor knows I do the probiotics. He was mm. all for, you need a good probiotic mm -hmm. because of the stomach issues and everything yep. else. So yep. I couldn't be on a better product. I mean, I'm just... Yeah. But I need yeah, to I mean, about it. I feel bad. Yeah, I, I, I thank you. Thank you so much. You you just honestly beautifully laid that out. Um, and I think that's the most beautiful thing about the ER shred. And you know, Sean where I was, you know, Sean and I were saying, like, look, Sean spent his entire life in this in this industry. Um, I've spent the last 20 plus years dedicating myself to understanding the human body, putting myself through as a human guinea pig. I still like, I don't know. Like that's my, I don't know. People go, well, how I don't know. Like, I don't know. Um, your journey is so different. Like you could have you where you might need two, three, four years of healing from all that damage that was done to your microbiome. And it takes time to repopulate your good gut bacteria and to heal all of the micro tears in your lining and to rebalance the toxin level. And, you know, but I hear you saying that the more I continue to just fuel my body, 
the, the better things are. I mean, from the inches to the walking, to the exercise, to everything in life, to your mindset, to the way that you're putting it together. And for some people, you know, don't just go take a probiotic because somebody says, oh, hey, you're, you know, you might have some belly rumbles. Well, trace back your history. Like if you didn't go through the extreme that Sarah did, you might not need a probiotic. You might just need to suck it up and do an 11 day shred two times in a row and stop putting crapola in your mouth. And that might heal you. Like that might be your solution. But if you need some more precision targeted healing solutions, that's the beautiful thing too. And would you say Sarah, because when you, you know, you're talking about collagen and, and adding extra stuff, but when you did your first shred, did you pull it all back and start from baseline? Yes. I, I didn't do anything. I, in fact, oh. collagen, I didn't add until probably come back with it in March. And also Amazing. one thing I mentioned point, point made and Sean, I don't have a gallbladder. It was removed okay. in 2000. Um, okay. But you know, as the I fats said, fats haven't been an issue for you, the quality fats. Cause I know a lot I of was on isobiomes from the start because I had issues with the shakes to start in 2019. Yep. It was yep. suggested to me to try to isobiome. I did that helped it. And all of a sudden three stomach meds went out the window. My doctor's like, looks like you don't need these anymore. By the way, on the pain thing, I have been pain pill free since January, 2021 as well. Um, that's huge. Uh, the only thing I take, we usually still haven't been able to get me out. Take a teeny tiny, the, the smallest dose possible of a blood pressure medicine. Okay. Um, and I have to watch it because even there, sometimes it dips too low if I'm exercising, things like that. But, you know, as I say, you know, always, always keep in touch with your doctor. You know, yeah. I can't say enough. That yeah. these are, plus, as, as shredders, it is nice to see the results. Like my A1C before I started. Uh, was 7.4. I'm now at 5.3. Wow. Yeah. And, that's and diabetes amazing. is a, was a problem on my whole dad's side of the family. Both yeah. him and his I wife. mean, pretty much anything five and below from what I've heard from all the research scientists that are experts in that field. Um, and that's their jam five and below is like money. Like that's yeah. what you want. I mean, the lower, the better, especially resting insulin rates. But wow, that's incredible. I mean, you went from pre-diabetes to, yeah. you know. Well, he wanted uh, to do that and cholesterol meds with me. Yeah. And I have avoided my blood work has shown no. He goes, we'll keep watching you. So I I actually will probably yeah. see him over the summer again. I'm sort of excited to see. Let me guess. He wanted like. to give you a statin, right? I Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I well, that's it. another call that we don't want to get Jesse riled yeah, up nope. into right now. But <laughs> um. <laughs> Listen, Sarah, I mean, this has been so full of such amazing information. Um, first and foremost, like I'm, I'm truly happy for you. Um, I, I watch you post. Um, you literally every single time you literally like you can just see it. You know what I mean? Like the confidence, the, the extra stuff. And I love that you highlighted because what makes you happy is literally what drives me. Um, I've always had this in me. I've tried not to care because I thought that was my issue is I cared too much, um, but I can't help it. You know what I mean? Like it just, it calls me. I think I, it's why I love this industry. Um, I believe everybody deserves to have their health. Um, I've struggled. I know what it's like. You shared a story of struggle. Um, you know, it's crazy to me how you come to these realizations really through struggle. And then from that, you're able to, pass along that information uh, for anybody that's open, right? That can, that can hopefully speed it up and get themselves there. So it, thank you for showing up. Go ahead. I just want to say, finally, it, it just the, I guess the one thing that kills me is those who aren't here, those who are out there. I yeah. keep seeing friends dropping from heart attack. Yeah. Um, I, it, when then we have, we have a solution Yeah. and you know, but you hope, and, and bringing people to good health, whatever good health is for you, improving the quality of your life, that's the whole purpose here. And yeah. what is going to resonate. And I love that we can custom do it. I love that nobody tells me, oh, you got to eat this. I mean, yeah. uh, honestly, we're not a plan for vegans, trust right. me. But other than that, even, yeah, 
I and yeah. Jesse, by the way, your tough love. I always when even when I'm just thinking, you know, when my stomach's even gurgling a little on the yeah, yeah, yeah. I always hear that suck it up buttercup. So yeah, I love that. it. I love it. Suck it up, buttercup. Mm -hmm. I told that to my daughter. She started to try to complain today. I was like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. You know what I'm going to tell you? She's like, I know, Dad. Suck it up. I'm like, that's right. Let's go. Um, listen, thank I you. love it. I love it. Y'all, you're so welcome. I'm just so happy for you. Um, thank you so much for showing up again. Thank you for sharing so many pieces of your life that you could keep private. Um, and it just shows really for me, how, how just amazing of a person you are, how much of a giver you are. Um, and really that's what, I mean, that's what we've come to love. Like we see this in our community, right? Like people come here on fire and, and they learn to put that fire out and like naturally they get to turn around and just help other people and it's spreading, you know, the ripple effect is just a beautiful thing. And I'm just, I'm so excited for people like you and so grateful for you to, to team up with you um, so we can keep helping people while we help ourselves, right? While we keep helping ourselves, um, we can keep doing this. And, it's just and, so we're, awesome. and, and we're all there. I want people to be, you're, you're ultra marathoner, but if you're just starting out with just a minute a day or a little bit of movement, you know, tag me in a post. Hey, this is what I can do or how can yep. I do this? Honestly, you know, I've worked with seniors for cheer exercise. You know, I don't care where you're at. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the point is there's fitness for everybody. You do not have to be an ultra marathon or you don't have 100%. to be wanting to race like I do. But I can show you little tips just so that you move 10 to 20 minutes a day. You'll be right. amazed at how much better your life will be changes everything right mm -hmm. yes it changes everything so sarah thank you so much uh i hope you guys got some value if you could um share in the comments below so sarah can see um what did you get out of this what value did you get did you tips and tricks that you can implement into your own life um don't be shy share your story if you're not part of this community what the hell are you waiting for? www.erstredders.com. Um, join us tomorrow night on Wednesday for the Shred Your Testimonial Call. If you need more epic testimonials, um, find us on YouTube. Find us on the ER Shred podcast. Find us on ER Shred, 11 Day ER Shred on YouTube. I mean, on uh, Instagram. I mean, it's everywhere now. It's all there for you. Um, Come and join the tribe. Let us be your support network. Let us hold you up when you need that holding up to get you to where you got to get to. And then let us just celebrate you as you continue to flourish. I mean, that's, that's truly what it's all about. So thank you guys all so much. We hope you have an amazing night. Thank you again, Sarah. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.